Welcome to the Atmosphere Church channel. On behalf of all of us here at Atmosphere, thank you for watching. We pray that this message will touch your heart and change your life. Regardless of what you believe, where you come from, or what questions you might have, you are welcome here. Our desire is to help lead you in experiencing God by following Jesus. If you want to find out more information about us, head over to our website at atmosphere.church. And don't forget to click below to subscribe. Enjoy the message. What's up guys, Pastor Jim Cruz here, lead pastor of Atmosphere Church, and let me say once again, thank you for inviting us into your living room or from wherever you're watching. We are just so grateful to have you part of our family. And hey, I know some of you just clicked on this and you didn't even have intentions to be a part of our gathering, but here you are. And I'm telling you, God has a special word for you. You are not here by accident. You are here on purpose. This is not a coincidence. This is God's providence that God is going to speak to your soul today. And hey, you are tuned in. You are locked in. And I believe showing up is half the battle. So the fact that you are tuned in and locked in means that you're already halfway to your victory. Go ahead and click on some like buttons, some emoji buttons right there. If you're watching on Facebook Live, hey, even if you're watching on YouTube Live, leave us a comment. Let us know how you are holding up uh, in this spring season. Weather is shifting. Uh, it's gorgeous around here. I don't know how it is in your neck of the woods, but hey, let us know uh, and connect with us. We have our online host, Dada. I call him the host with the most. And uh, so he is there with you guys on at least Facebook Live. But regardless, we're pumped. And as you saw from that video, we have a whole brand new talk series that I prepped you last week that we're going to start today. And it's called Identity Theft. Now, for some people that are watching right now, this is all too familiar because you have been the victim of identity theft. It is one of the fastest growing crimes that we have to deal with in our culture, in our society. And it's wild. I mean, uh, I have had one credit card that has been compromised five times in like the last three years. It's just, it, it's a crazy crime that seems to impact so many people. I was just reading, according to Experion.com, that one in 15 Americans uh, each year are affected by identity theft. Uh, the church uh, was affected, not our church per se, but a church that I know and am connected with. Um, they use PayPal uh, to do transactions for their Africa outreach. And so people give to that. And it go, again, it goes straight to our Africa schools. And somebody had totally hacked into PayPal and did a whole account takeover of this account that was specifically for African orphaned children. They took it over. We discovered it. And we're like, what is going on? Because we're watching and we can't get access to it. And then we're reading. They, they took money out and they paid Julio's rent. Oh, I don't even know who Julio is in New York. But, but this person that took over our account was generous towards Julio. I'm thinking that Julio was the one that took over the account. But it got all solved. But man, 
it costs so much time. And a lot of times when you're the victim of identity theft, it costs you thousands of dollars just to kind of get your identity back. And so this is why we want to talk about this because it's one thing to have this happen to your life. It's another conversation when it happens to your spirit. And that's what we want to talk about over the next several weeks that many people that I know that are even followers of Jesus struggle with their identity because we have all of these different voices being thrown at us. Our true identity in Christ gets distorted in the process. And so the devil, our adversary, comes into our life and he distorts the truth. And then it's hard for us to really walk in the identity that we have. So I'm going to pray. We're going to jump into a couple different scriptures. If you are following along on our notes, and you can find our notes in the Bible app, and the YouVersion Bible app, if you go under the events and find Atmosphere Church, you're going to be able to follow along in our notes. Thank you, Jessica, by the way, for setting that up for us. But we're going to be in the book of Genesis. We're going to all the way back to the beginning, the book of Genesis. And I'm going to read some scriptures along the way. But let me pray this. Father, I thank you for everybody that has tuned in today, that is connected with our family. God, I pray that, Lord, lives are changed from today's broadcast. Lord, that that people are healed from what they hear you declare over their lives. God, I pray that families are brought back together again and restored because of how you're going to move within their family. So Lord, we say thank you in advance for how you're going to do that. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen and amen. So I want to take you to a scripture, and, and this really sets the whole series up. Because I, I want to tell you that the most undertaught subject in the modern church is spiritual warfare. The most undertaught, but it's the most important. And there's so many people that are living in this world totally clueless that they are not just a human having a, a spiritual experience, they're actually a spirit having a human experience, that there are invisible forces at work against our life, and the Bible talks about that, but check out what Jesus says in regards to our identity. Check this out. In John chapter 10, verse 10, it says, the thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. That's the amplified version. So the Greek word there for abundant life is like an overflowing experience. Like like Jesus came to put so much life inside of you that is going to just overflow and splash out at everybody around you. Now, you, you really have two choices in how you're going to live your life. Are you going to live in the overflow of what Jesus is making available for you? Or are you going to listen to the lies that the thief is talking to you and you're going to walk in those lies? And if you do, your identity is going to be taken from you. It's it's going to bring destruction and all kinds of damage in your life. Now, even though we look at identity theft as like a modern crime, because you know so many people are impacted because of like cyber crime, the, the rise of cyber crime, that it's it's a modern crime, but it's the oldest crime on record according to the Bible. Did you know that? Identity theft. And I'm gonna take you back to the book of Genesis, chapter three, and I am going to uncover the original identity theft that happens. Okay, Genesis chapter three, if you're following along in this particular passage. It says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden. But God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. And you must not touch it or you will die. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman. 
For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? And he answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. (laughs) First passing the buck ever recorded too, by the way. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. Now, there are so many layers to the text that I just read and we could really geek out and, and talk about some really significant things with the Hebrew language and, and I'll save that for another day. I want to focus in, I want to hone in on the idea of identity theft right here because see what happened. The serpent spoke to Eve and she wasn't freaked out that the serpent was speaking so I kind of think maybe before the fall, maybe animals, maybe everybody had a little Dr. Doolittle, I don't know. Um, But the serpent was speaking to Eve. She was understanding him. And in this dialogue, check out what he does first. He gets her to start doubting the true voice of God. So so he kind of sprinkles the truth of God with a little distortion. And then as soon as he started to get her to kind of have the words of God a little distorted, then he went in for the kill. Then he understood like, okay, so now she's kind of pulled away from from really moving into the truth of what God said, and now she's believing a lie instead of the truth, which then led to their fall. So he was able to replace the truth with a lie that ultimately caused them both to fall and when they fell look what happened they they were naked and then they realized and then they went and hid themselves the first thing they did after they fell is they hid themselves from God and and they were they were walking in shame so this beautiful image that God had created out of the dust of the ground called Adam and Eve that was taken from him Eve like like both of them together were were created they were image bearers of God. And and so here they are in this perfect condition with this perfect identity, in this perfect relationship with God. And as soon as they fall, you could see that they're no longer comfortable with who they are. They've kind of lost their identity in that moment. And instead of running towards God because of what had happened, they ran away from God because of what happened. Man, There are so many of us that are living in the space where Adam and Eve were. There there is a a place where God wants us to live where we fully know who we are and there's no longer a need to hide from anybody. In Genesis chapter 2, like before the fall, I want to I want to take you back to this because you know a lot of people know like what happened when Adam and Eve fell and their identity was stolen from them and all of a sudden they were just you know in the state uh, that they were in but pre fall listen to what happens in Genesis chapter two for this reason a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh so Eve was created I love reading this by the way in weddings. Because 
This is where God creates the marriage union, the marriage covenant between husband and wife. And so I love to read that because it, it shows like how women are made so different than men and that God actually has us different so that the differences won't create World War III in our homes, but will actually allow us to complement one another in our weaknesses. So I just want to give a marriage tip for you. Stop using your differences as ammunition to have conflict, but actually use those differences as a way to complement one another. Because where one is weak, the other is strong. And that's the way God invented marriage to be. So husband and wife coming together, they're to, to be together as one flesh. And then it says, and the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. This, I, this happened at the first wedding I ever performed, uh, officiated as a pastor. So I'm like reading this. I'm like in this moment where I'm talking about like, man shall leave his father and his mother and they shall cleave together and become one flesh. Now, that's where I was supposed to end. And so I like stopped and looked at everybody like, wow, isn't that a cool moment? And then for some reason, I read the next verse because this is how the chapter ends. If you can go back to that scripture, this is how the chapter ends. And, just, and, and, and so I'm looking at everybody and I looked at the bride and the groom and I said, and they were both naked and unashamed. <laughs> I, was, I, I was like, I'm having a head conversation in the middle of all these people at this wedding. Going, Why did I just do that? So, hey, let's just drop our clothes right now. We're just going to be naked and unashamed together. It's like, why did I do that? I don't know. So uh, an embarrassing pastoral moment. But the point is, like, you know, when you get your true identity, you know, you're not going to just go out and drop your clothes and, and live naked. But the point is that you can become so comfortable with who you are that no longer are, are you on the run and trying to hide. I believe that a lot of people that have self-imagery problems, it really comes back to the original sin. That I, I don't know, like maybe you look in the mirror and you don't like what you see and you're not happy with who you are. And, and, and I understand like, you know, maybe you're not in the best health or whatever, but, but I think a lot of this... Um, this discontentment with how we look really goes back to Genesis chapter three, that there's something internally broken. It's not necessarily how you look, but the identity that you are understanding you really have. And, and once you understand the identity of who God declares you to be, it's going to be much easier for you to be happy with who you are. And, and this is what fires me up about this whole series because so many people are listening to other voices declaring to them who they are versus listening to the voice of God. The thief is in the work in, in this headspace, distorting truth, getting us to believe lies so that he can get us to fall. Because that's the whole point of sin. If, if he can move sin in your life, he wants to fill your life with so much shame that you will lose track of who you really are and what Jesus Christ has declared you to be when he died for you and resurrected for you as we celebrated last week. Now, I, 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 I get super excited that when, when we think about who we are in Christ, that the Bible declares the truth will set us free. Look at what Jesus said. So Jesus in John chapter eight, this is what he says. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So when you start listening to truth in your life, it sets you free. But what's the opposite of that? If the truth sets you free, then a lie actually holds you in captivity. So when, when you are listening to lies, those lies are actually putting you into a place of bondage and making you imprisoned so that you do not advance your life and the life that God has for you in his kingdom. And it all stems from a, an identity problem. So the more you're listening to the truth 
of the identity that God has declared you to be, the more free you will live your life and you will move towards the destiny and the promises that God has already given to you to experience in your life. That's so good. So who are we really? Who, who are we in like God's perspective? When God sees us, how does he see us? When God sees you, how does he see you? Now, if you're a follower of Jesus, I will tell you, there are truths about your identity that maybe were stolen from you. Maybe you never had anybody declare it over you. But let me just give you some things to think about. That when you are a follower of Christ, when you have the Spirit of God living on the inside of you, man, the Bible tells us that I am a child of God. I am created in the image of God. I am an heir to the throne of God. I am more than a conqueror. I am a new creation. I am a citizen of heaven. I am fearfully and wonderfully made, baby. All right? I have forgiveness for my past, meaning for my present, and hope for my future. All right? I am established, anointed, sealed by God, and nothing can separate me from his love tweet that that's who you are you my friend are so much more than the lies and the distorted views of yourself that social media feeds you i am convinced listen to me i am convinced that social media is the biggest sabotager of you walking in your true identity that social media is the biggest source of identity theft in your life and for some of you the best thing to do is unplug yourself from it and millennials and gen xers or not gen xers gen zers i should say are unplugging it by the droves it's happening they're seeing it because when you get lost in your identity of course you're going to feel anxiety if you don't know who you really are, if you have all of these voices around you telling you who you are, and most of those things are distorted and they're lies, and you're entertaining all of those things, then, then of course you're going to feel anxious. You, because you're going to be like Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 3. You're going to be on the run because you're not comfortable with who you are. And when you're not comfortable with who you are, you're going to want to run away from everybody. Do you know the side effect of heightened anxiety is agoraphobia? The fear of being around other people? It's true. Like, look at it. You know, Google that. Psychology 101 will tell you that. So you have anxiety here, and anxiety unchecked actually leads to agoraphobia and in many cases, depression. But I want to present to you that I believe a bulk of the anxiety that many people feel is in lost identity of who they really are. And if, and if you can get your identity back, I believe the anxiety levels are going to go down, 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 and down. Because the Bible says, perfect love casts out fear. So we, we have to understand that this is a big part of how God is going to help us out on this level. Now, um, I, I've got here, you guys recognize this? Yeah. Okay, this is what you call old school boombox, baby. This, this is right here a way to listen to your favorite tunes, right? Man, how many of you guys remember? Because, hey, I got a cassette in here. I didn't even realize I have a cassette. A mixtape. This is from Tara. All right, so I don't know. We'll listen to that later. I didn't even know that was in there. But the idea is that if you want to listen to something, you have to have speakers in order to listen to it. So I want to tell you that, that God wants to speak to you. And God's, let, let me say it this way, the Bible is God's boombox. The Bible is. So as you open up the Bible, and, and, and as you start listening to the things the Bible is saying, it is giving God a voice in your life. 
You have all these other voices going on. You have social media voices. You got your friends' voices. You've got television and movie voices. You've got voices that aren't even connected to a person. They're connected to the devil, the thief in your life. And, And he's alive. I mean, nobody, you know, you can get into a place where you're in complete quietness and nobody's talking to you, but you still hear voices. And I'm not talking like crazy voices, like I hear voices in my head. But you know what I'm talking about. They're, they're, I call them thought bubbles. And they're, they're going nonstop. So you have all these other voices. And, and here is the unfortunate bad news. You cannot completely turn those voices off. It can't be done. Like there are serpents that will perpetually be in our life trying to get our attention and trying to get us to listen to them. So the key is not trying to turn those voices off, but it's actually learning to turn the voice of God up in our life, taking the volume and and being able to turn the dial up on full blast. Because the louder God's voice becomes for your life, the less likely you will listen to the voices of your adversary that wants to distort the truth and get you to buy the lie so that you will eventually fall away. So we got to learn how to turn the voice of God up by simply looking at the word of God. This is why we practice a daily Bible reading plan. We just got a new card last week, right? As we started the month of April. And I want to encourage you every day, what you do is you open the Bible and you read a chapter of the Old Testament, chapter of the New Testament, and you get a good Bible, like like I have the Life Application Bible. My, my dog uh, ate my Bible. I told you guys this already, but um, it's uh, Billy. We have this little uh, pug dog. She's part pug, part, part chihuahua. I call her a chug dog. And so she's a little, little puppy, and she likes to uh, eat everything that's down there. And I had left my Bible on the ground for a second, and she started eating the Bible. And I said, Tara, we have a Christian dog. That little dog is devouring the word of God. That's a dad joke, all right? So I, I'm just saying that when, when you're in the Bible, you're, it's like God has a speaker to your soul, reminding you of what he's declared about you. Because what I've learned is you have two voices to listen to. Your adversary versus your advocate. Now, Jesus is your advocate. The Lord is your advocate. He went to the cross, died for your sins, resurrected from the dead so that he could live on the inside of you. So when the adversary comes after you, you also have the advocate working for you. And the advocate that you have is so much more stronger than the adversary. But you got both voices and you have a choice to make. The voice you decide to listen to determines the future you will experience. The voice you listen to will determine the future that you experience. So 78 times in the Gospels, Jesus says, I tell you the truth. Jesus speaks the truth because he is the truth and you can't kick out the lies from your mind on your own. You need truth to come in and fill your heart with himself. And so the more truth that you're receiving, the less you will likely buy into the lies. When negativity pulls you down, what what does God's voice do? God's voice pulls you up. So when the adversary declares to you that you're not enough, your advocate says you're more than a conqueror. When the adversary says that you're messed up, your advocate says you're forgiven. When the adversary says you can't do that, your advocate says that you can do all things through me who gives you strength. When your adversary says no one loves you, your advocate says you are so loved. Remember that last week? And that, that I actually gave my life for you. When the adversary says you are a mistake, your advocate declares that you are my masterpiece created for good works. When the adversary says there's no way out, your advocate says with me in your life, all things are possible. So do you feel that tension right now? That the voice that you listen to determines the future that you experience. And God is in your life so that you can listen to him and you can believe in what he's saying about your life. And the more that you are wearing this identity, 
the more that you are going to walk in your destiny. Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. It says this, set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on earth. So there's an intentionality that comes out here going, all right, what voices am I going to listen to? I'm going to listen to the voice of heaven speak to me. I'm going to listen for God. I'm going to get in my word. I'm going to listen to some worship music, right? Because you, if, if you really follow Jesus and have the spirit of God, then you have to know the spirit of God is speaking. And the primary way he's going to do it is through the Bible, but he's going to also be speaking to some other, he's going to speak to you through a friend. He's going to speak through uh, the worship song that you're listening to. He's going to speak through uh, maybe at somebody texting you. Um, he's going to speak to you. Maybe even, you know, at somebody at church as you're there at church, but God is going to show up and he is going to be your advocate to come against the voices because he wants you to win in every aspect of your life to move you towards the promises that he has so you just got to tune it in. You got to tune it in and turn it up, right? Speak scripture over yourself. So when, when you feel these voices distorting the truth, distorting your identity, then, then find some verses that you can lean into and just quote over yourself. So some of you that struggle with anxiety, you, you say like what we read last week in our devotions in 2 Timothy chapter 1. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. That's what God's declared. So like you, you take a scripture like that, man, I'm telling you, the more you hear God speaking, the less anxious you will be feeling. The more you hear God speaking, the less anxious you will be feeling. Over the next several weeks, what we're going to do is we're going to take the most frequently repeated lies that people wrestle with and and we're going to put them out there and we're going to put some truth to it so that we can help you fight the good this is a good fight so that you can cancel those other voices by really leaning into the one voice that matters that makes all the difference and that is the voice of God for your life declaring to you who you are by showing you repeatedly it's all about whose you are, that you belong to God, making you a child of God. So with that in mind, I'm going to pray for you today to walk in the true identity that God has given you. So would you just, wherever you're at, just bow your head. If you're driving, don't close your eyes, but if you're not driving, go ahead, close your eyes, and let's pray. Father, I thank you, God, for every person that tuned in today, God, that I believe that you are coming against the distortions and the lies that the enemy has been so cleverly putting into their life, trying to steal their rightful identity that you've given them in Christ. God, we reclaim that identity. Lord, we speak the truth in place of the lies, God, knowing that truth sets us free or lies hold us in captivity. So Father, today I pray a release in Jesus' name against the lies, Lord, and help us, God, to turn the volume up of your voice speaking into our life, that we are more than enough, and that we are so loved, that, God, we are your masterpiece. And, God, let us walk in that truth of who we are and that true identity. And while everyone is praying, maybe you're struggling because you know you're far from God. Maybe a friend shared this broadcast with you or maybe you just randomly tuned in i, I want to speak to you that you may be feeling really lost because you're far from god but you don't have to live one more day like that my friend that god so loves you and he wants a relationship with you where he gets on the inside of you and transforms you into a whole new creation where old things pass away and behold, new things come. So if you're ready for a restart of the heart, if you're ready to step in to the life and the purpose that God has always had for your life from the moment you were conceived, God had a plan and a purpose for you, but it involves him being in you. And if you have not made that decision to say yes to following Jesus, to receive the Spirit of God to dwell in you, then I want to encourage you to pray that prayer with me right now, right where you're sitting, right where you're at. Just pray this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, 
Today I acknowledge I am far from you. But I want to give my life to you. I want to follow you. And I want you to send your spirit to live in me. Thank you for forgiving me of all my past. For giving me meaning for my present and hope for my future. For today I make a decision to follow you. And to be your your son, to be your daughter. In Jesus name, amen and amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer for the first time. Or maybe you're rededicating yourself to God, then we want to hear from either one of you. We want you to reach out to us, text uh, the Atmos phone, uh, 805-807-9444, and just said, sim- say simply on the text, I said yes. And we will send you all kinds of great resources and get you more connected with the Atmosphere family. We love you guys. Let's continue to celebrate God because he is the one that gives us our true meaningful identity. Let's worship him and we'll see you next week. Thank you for tuning in today to another great message from Atmosphere Church. If this message is spoken to your heart, would you take a moment and share it with your friends? You can connect with us on Spotify, iTunes, podcast, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Simply do a search for Atmosphere Church through these various platforms and then click the follow or subscribe button. If you're watching this video on YouTube, you should see it right below this video. It's another great way for us to be able to stay connected with you. If you live in the Southern California area, we would love to invite you to be part of our family. For more information about our church, go to our official webpage at atmosphere.church. Finally, if this service and our other resources bless you, would you consider giving back to Atmosphere Church to support not only these things, but also support the creation of even more resources for you. To make a donation, simply go to our website and click on the tab that says Give. Your gift of any amount is greatly appreciated. Until next time, we pray that you will keep the faith, spread the hope, and live the love.